F you for making me feel very old. So the story goes, you know, I went down and I auditioned for Motley. I was in the screen. They did a magazine article, and uh, or Nicky did, and he was saying things like, uh, you know, what kind of music are you listening to when you're not on the road? And he goes, man, I, I really love this band from L.A. called The Scream. And he was going on and on and on and on and on. And uh, so I had a break. We were doing our, you know, when you go on tour, they do what they call legs. So you'll go out for like four weeks and then you come home for like a week or so and then you go back out again. And uh, we were finishing up the leg of a tour in LA, we were doing a show, so I was home for a few days. <clears throat> and I, I don't know what possessed me to do it, but I figured I'd pick the phone up and I'd call them and I'd say thank you for all the plug that they gave us in uh, Spin Magazine. And uh, so I called, finally, I got a hold of uh, their management company and I picked the phone up and I, I, the girl answered and I said, hello, this is John Karabi and uh, from The Scream and I'd like to say thank you to Nikki Six for the you know, for plugging our band. And the girl goes, who? I go, John Karabi from The Scream, and I'd like to thank Nikki Six from all the crew. So she goes, give me your number, give me your... So I'm like, okay. So I leave her my number, and uh, as I said, I was, you know, hung the phone up, and I'm walking out the door, and as I'm walking out the door, my wife at the time says, Honey, uh, the phone rings, she answers it, she goes, you should take this call. No, not gonna do it. I'm running late, I gotta go. So she goes, as any good wife would do, you know, man, what I'm talking about, she goes, I think you should take this call. <laughs> so I come back and uh, I go, hello. And I hear on the other end, is this John Karabi? And I go, yep. And it's like, dude, it's Tommy Lee. And I'm like, uh, 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 seriously? Yeah, and Nikki says, so the two of them are out riding around in this like $27 million like Italian sports car convertible, you know, it had like a fax machine, and back then, they already have phones in the car, like 93, and like a phone, fax machine, it had like a Jaeger dispenser, it had auto suck, it had everything, it was awesome. So anyway, they're, they're out, and they, you know, hey dude, Vince isn't with us anymore. We need you to we need you to come in on Monday. This is Friday now, right? We need you to come in on Monday, audition. And again, I was like, uh, uh, seriously? Yes. Longest weekend ever. So I get there Monday, walk in, very intimidated, obvious for obvious reasons, and we do Shot at the Devil, Dr. Feel Good, Live Wire. We did Helder Skelder, Jailhouse Rock, Smoking in the Boys Room. And they go, that was awesome. Can you come back tomorrow? Yes, I can. So I come in the second day, Tuesday now, and I walk in, and there's all these guys lined up against the wall in suits and ties, right? So I walk in, and they're, you know, uh, this is our manager, Doug. I go, hi, Doug, how are you? This is our accountant, Chuck. Hey, Chuck, how are you? This is our lawyer, David. David, nice to meet you. This is our lawyer, Mike. Mike, nice to meet you. This is our lawyer, Bob. Nice to meet you. This is our lawyer, Carl. I go, how many fucking lawyers do you guys have? They're like, we get sued a lot. <laughs> okay, great. So I, I'm like, all right, whatever. So then I look over on this side of the room and I was very intimidated by that side of the room but I look on this side of the room and I'm like not intimidated anymore because there sits Heather Locklear and Brandy Brandt. And I'm like, oh, TJ Hooker. <laughs> All right, so we got this, we, you know, we know what the room looks like now. So we do the same thing again. Get all done, the girls leave, everybody shakes my hand, all 26 lawyers, boom, out the door they go. One of the last lawyer goes, oh, by the way, you weren't here. Uh, and that's a whole other thing. Maybe I'll tell you guys tomorrow. But anyway, so they leave, and I'm sitting there, and the guys are like gonna stop rehearsal. We're done. I go, hold on, let's jam. And I'm thinking, if I don't get this gig, 
at least I can write a song with these guys for the next Scream record, right? So I go, let's jam. Okay, cool, what do you want to jam? So we start jamming blues. So I go, can I, can I use a guitar? And they're like, oh, you play? I go, yeah, so then Mick and I start trading off back and forth solos. We're doing like Honky Tonk Woman by the Stones and, and uh, this old Aerosmith blues cover called Reefer Headed Woman. We're doing all this shit. And then we start working on a riff. Now, if anybody has the Motley 94 record, do you remember the record? Okay, so you remember the, there's a song in there called Hammer, right? So the first night, that night, we had probably 90% of that song written that night. And then we hit a wall. So then Nikki said, hey, I got some lyrics, you know, a few lyrics here and a couple chords, and I just want to see what you can do with this. Um, can you, you know, try and jam this next song? So I said, yeah, and so this next song I'm gonna play is one of the ones that we worked on that night. So maybe 10 days later, we did a demo, then we did five songs, 10 days, two weeks later, we did five songs on it. Of the five songs, three of them made the record. One was Hammer, one was Love Shine, and one was this one. So don't you cry 